anyone else's mind actually blown? The NBA is in the middle of a scoring revolution, and the last couple of weeks have been nothing short of absolute madness. We're talking about scoring explosions that defy all norms, where 60 to 70 points per night has become the new standard, a standard that players are making look easy. History is being rewritten, records are being shattered, and the basketball world is collectively losing its mind. But amidst all the chaos, there's one lingering thought on every fan's mind. When will a player finally shatter Wilt Chamberlain's legendary record of 100 points in a single game? Is this even possible? Kobe Bryant didn't think so. I don't think it's reachable, but you can't say, you know, uh, never. If and when it does happen, which jaw-dropping player will it be to accomplish this historic feat? Viral videos are circulating about the NBA being broken. They feel this increased scoring is due to defensive laziness and league-driven moments for viewership. They believe we are witnessing the worst era in NBA history. With these strong opinions floating around, if a player breaks Wilt Chamberlain's historic 101-point record, will it be a moment of celebration or will it carry a bittersweet undertone? Let's explore some of these ideas, diving into recent games that make that coveted 101 no longer feel impossible. Kevin Durant couldn't believe what he was hearing when he was told about Joe Embiid's 70-point night. Yeah, 70. Embiid reached this total in just 37 minutes on the floor. That's the least number of minutes played by any 70-point scorer in NBA history. This overshadowed another incredible performance that same night. Carl Anthony Towns broke the Timberwolves franchise single game scoring record, scoring 62 points while grabbing 17 rebounds. Two incredible players having career scoring highs on the same night? The fact they are traditional big men makes this feat even more uncommon. We are all standing here trying to catch our breath and process this crazy night. Before we could even do that, Luka Doncic dropped 73 points just four nights later. This tied for the fourth most points scored in a game in NBA history. Like, are you kidding me? This performance was against the Hawks, the team that drafted him third overall in the 2018 draft, then instantly traded him away. He used this opportunity to show them exactly what they missed out on. The point totals themselves were not the only thing historic about this outing. It was also the level of efficiency he displayed. Luka made 25 of 33 shot attempts, this included going 8 for 13 from the three-point line. He also made 15 of 16 free throws. That gave him a true shooting percentage of 91.2%. That level of shooting only exists in my 2K24 My Player season, where my 99 overall player is still playing on rookie difficulty. Luka is really cementing his case in the MVP race this season. This is the fourth season in a row Doncic has increased his scoring per game total. This season, it currently sits at 34.4 points per night. With him increasing these totals year after year, it's absolutely terrifying for the NBA to find out what this kid's ceiling looks like. This night for Luka, like Embiid and Cats night, shared another historic night for an NBA star. Devin Booker scored 63 points in a loss to the Pacers. This duo both scoring more than 60 points in the same night marks the fifth time in NBA history that two players have scored 60 plus on the same night. It's insane this extremely uncommon event happened twice within a week. There have now been five 60-plus point performances this season. And we aren't even to the All-Star break yet. The record of nine was set back in the 1962-63 season. It's hard to think this season won't surpass that age-old record. Cat, Booker, and Luka are three of the nine players who have surpassed 60-point games multiple times in their career. Truly remarkable we get to witness this firsthand you might recognize some of the company they have on this list. How has this been possible? What is leading to this increase in 60-point explosions? The answer is the league is changing. Key factors like faster league-wide pace, offensive efficiency is better, players and coaching embracing three-pointers, and more offenses revolve around a single star. These things have combined to not only increase a single player's chance to score more, but also the team as a whole. Faster pace equals more possessions. 10 years ago, teams averaged just over 91 possessions per game. This year, the number has increased to 99.3. On this chart, you can see the consistent climb over the last 10 years for points, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, and the amount of attempted three-point shots. This creates a perfect storm for scoring explosions on any given night. 
It also leaves the opportunity for the league to break the all-time highest scoring record set back in the 1961-1962 season. Teams during that season averaged 118.8 points per game, while shooting a much lower field goal percentage than our current NBA. The league ended last season at 114.7 points per game. This season going into the All-Star break, the average is 115.6. This marks a consistent climb each year, up from 106.3 in the 2017-18 season. To me, it looks like the league has set their what do you want to be in five years goal. With these league-wide changes, it really starts to make Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game feel reachable. Wilt Chamberlain accomplished this with no three-point line in a similar pace game. All his teammates were on board and forced him the ball. Wilt played all 48 minutes of the game. His teammates were even intentionally fouling the opposing team to get Wilt the ball back late. In the fourth quarter alone, he shot 21 field goals and 10 free throws, a current NBA star having a three-point line, quick pace game, and team cooperation? Why couldn't they score more than 101 points in a game? Kobe Bryant was interviewed after his 81-point game. He spoke about how so many things have to go right for a performance like this. The feeling I had was I could run all day. The basket's pretty big. I didn't feel like I was in one of those zones where the basket just feels like a big bucket. Kobe played 41 minutes in this game. If you added seven more minutes, possibility of overtime, plus some missed shots go in, boom! That was Kobe's 100 points. It seems very crazy to think about, but that is the historic game we are waiting for. I'm sure you remember this story. In 2012, no, Jack Taylor last night shattered a record that had stood for more than half a century. A Grinnell College player named Jack Taylor scored a whopping 138 points in a game. He shot 71 three-point shots, but only made 27 of them. He shot over 108 field goal attempts and 10 free throws. Jack finished this game with, you guessed it, zero assists and only three rebounds. He set the record for the most points scored in a single NCAA game. He received some praise for this feat, but also received a large amount of media hate for his selfish and careless play. Stephen A is shrugging over this kid scoring 138 points. I'm not. Just to obtain the record, Jack credited his teammates for the unselfishness throughout the record setting outing. While examining the stats, you see the shot efficiency pretty average. His teammates were forcing him the ball, and he was jacking up every shot he could. This game was all about quantity with very little quality. Achieving a milestone like 101 points in a single game isn't just about skill. It's also about strategy. How could a player realistically accomplish this feat in the NBA? Well, it involves a combination of luck, scoring efficiency, teamwork, and perhaps a little bit of strategic gameplay. There is always the option of the Jack Taylor strategy an NBA player willing to sell their soul and sacrifice their image for one single night just to beat a record that seemed it could never be broken. One game, this NBA player, with much more talent than Jack Taylor, force-fed the ball, while also not caring about whether they win or lose the game. Seems feasible enough now, right? Imagine a Luka Doncic, Steph Curry, Devin Booker shooting 71 three-point shots in a game. Even if they made the league average 36% of those shots, that puts them at 77 points, or maybe a LeBron James. This legend decides he's done and finally wants to hang it up for good. He looks around and realizes there's one last record he doesn't have in his trophy case. His teammates all get on board and want to send him out with a bang. You never know. This leads to the next point and the biggest question. What happens if a player breaks Wilt Chamberlain's historic 100-point record? Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game is a legendary tale in the NBA's rich history. It's a record that has stood the test of time, and breaking it would undoubtedly be a monumental feat. But as we ponder the possibility, it raises the question, how will fans and players react to witnessing history unfold before their eyes? The player who manages to surpass Wilt's record will undoubtedly etch their name in NBA history. But how will this accomplishment impact their legacy? Will fans view them as a hero who conquered a seemingly insurmountable challenge? Or will there be a shadow cast over their achievement? Especially depending on the strategy used to obtain such a record. Will players and fans demand an asterisk be placed next to this player's name? Like when Barry Bonds broke the career home run record? The MLB never felt he was being truthful about any type of steroid use. Will the NBA scoring record also have this hollow shell type of feeling? Like drinking a watered-down cocktail, it lacks the punch and vibrancy you were hoping for, leaving you with a taste that falls flat, much like the muted excitement of a diluted experience. 
we will never know how the reaction will be. Only time will reveal if a new legend emerges to etch their name in the archives of NBA history. Record talk aside, what we have witnessed this season is truly amazing. These are the stories your older self will be excited to share with the next generation. I was there! So, to all the basketball-loving families out there, share your stories, embrace these magical moments, and keep the love for the game burning bright.